QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Bank reconciliation month number one, checks and cash decreases. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars, Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page, go into the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, P&L, profit and loss, changing it for the, just that first month this time. 01-01-23 to 01-31-23. Customize it. Fonts and numbers, changing the font to 14, okay, yes and okay. Reports drop down again, company financial this time. The balance sheet, changing the range in from 010123 to just 013123 for that first month. Fonts and numbers on up to 14, okay. Yes, okay, that's the setup process we do every time. Prior presentations, we've been for working on the first month bank reconciliation, tying out our number here as of January 31st, 2023 to what is on the bank statement. Last time, we've been looking at the beginning balance, the month one issues with it, and then the additions. Now we're focusing in on the subtractions, the checks and other decreases. Let's go on over and open up our bank reconciliation by going to the banking drop down, reconcile, reconcile. Let's do some, we're gonna reconcile here, people. There's too much tension going on. It's gonna be checking account. It's gonna be uh, January 31st, and there's no beginning balance here because that's our first reconciliation issue we talked about before. We'll get into that more later. Here's the ending balance that we tied out. So that's that. And then we're not going to do anything for the service charges and interest. Continuing on, we already checked off some of the items on the deposit side. I'm going to hide everything that's after January. We've got that outstanding deposit we're okay with at this point. Now we're on the decreases side of things. The decreases may be, as we have here, checks, or they may be electronic transfers. Either way, it doesn't matter, although there's going to be some differences in the data that we would expect to be coming through on the bank statement. Also, as we think about these bank statements, you also might think about how the bank feeds will, will work if you were to use the bank feeds. We'll talk more about that in the bank feed course or section. So here we've got the decreases. So remember, we talked about the beginning balance. We then checked off that we have the additions. And if the subtractions check off, we have to come to the cleared balance, which would be correct. That's the idea. Now, on the checks or decreases, if it's a check that we wrote, then we have the benefit of the check number, which is nice. That can help us to check it off. And we, we might have like a canceled check, which could, if we want to get more information on the check, then we've got that. Although we have to go online typically and at least request a canceled check or look or, you know, search it out. The date we have as well, but that date is not as useful if it's a physical check that was written because it's likely that there's going to be a fairly significant lag between when we wrote the check and then when the check actually cleared because it had to be mailed it had to been then deposited into the other bank and so on and so forth and then our bank notified and whatnot so that's where the issue is now that means in that case we typically want to have a full service accounting system in particular for that case because i want to know if the check was written and outstanding and whether it was cleared or not. I don't want to wait for it to clear the bank before recording it because that defeats the purpose of me being able to see that I wrote the check and that it cleared. However, if you have electronic transfers, 
then the date should be pretty close to the point in time that you entered it. So if you had a full service accounting system and you're entering the decreases as you make them, then, then you would expect they clear the bank pretty quickly and therefore your date is gonna be more relevant. You won't have a check number coming through on the bank side of things, but you will have a bank memo typically, which gives you detail on who you paid and that kind of stuff, which can also be useful to help verify the checks. Now, of course, if you do electronic transfers, it's more likely that you could put up a system where you don't enter the transactions first using a full service bookkeeping system, but rather wait till they clear the bank and then record them, which would in essence be kind of like just using your bank statement to make your books, right? You would, and, and that could be more viable given the fact that the memos with the electronic transfers will then show up and, and allow you to, to, to know who you paid so that you can enter the, the checks and also enter the vendors or add the vendors as you go with the help of the bank data, the bank memo. But that's the general idea. So we've got, we've got the check numbers here. So let's just tick and tie some of these out. So here's on 117, I'm gonna look for the number. I'm gonna look for the amount. Remember the idea being that we're gonna go from the bank statement to the books. I'm going from the bank statement to the books because everything on the bank statement should be on the books. If it's not, then we're gonna most likely have to fix the books unless the bank was in error, which it usually isn't. If it's on the books, but not on the bank statement, that might happen. We expect that to happen at least a couple times, possibly for outstanding checks that we wrote, which have not yet cleared the bank. That's why you always wanna go from the bank to the books, or at least think about that as the general process. So here we go. 12,000, 12,000 is right there. I, it looks like I missed a check number. So this one has a check number. We don't have the check number over here, but it's the similar date. So I'm gonna assume that's the same one. I'm gonna greenify that, greenify it. We've got the 1,000, 1,000. Now these two, note, aren't over here. So I'm gonna say, man, those aren't there. What's going on here? And I can see that, well, that looks like it's the difference between that 30,000 and this beginning balance that we put into our books, meaning these were the outstanding checks, you would think, that were there entered as of uh, 12 December of the prior year that, that were outstanding. That's why my beginning balance doesn't tie out. So we'll get back to that later. So I'm gonna say that looks funny because those are not there and they're at the beginning of the month. So I would expect if they were, you know, there would be outstanding items on my books that aren't here. So these are on the bank statement, they're not in our books. And so you would think that we have to do something about that. We'll talk more about them later. So I'm gonna go down to the 16,000, 16,000 is here. Check number 1002, the date is always later on our books, it should be, this was a practice problem, so I may have made some mistakes, but it should always be later because of course, uh, the, the bank's not gonna know about it, we're gonna know about it first. We're gonna enter the data and the bank will know about it at some point in the future. If it's an actual check, it'll be fairly further into the future, depending on who got the check and how long they take before they deposit it. If it's an electronic transfer, it'll still be in the future, but hopefully like one to three days or something pretty quick. So here's 1003, 7,000. So 1003, 7,000, boom. We'll just do some ticking, some tying. Just shut up and tick and tie here. 1005, 6892. So 1005, notice it might not be in order. And this is the case because th when you have your, your bank data on this side, they might put it in order by date that it cleared but if it's an order by date that it cleared, that's not necessarily in the same order of date that it was entered because some checks might have cleared, you know, in out of order from when you wrote them. So you're gonna have some discrepancies probably there in, in like the sequence, it might not be in the exact order, that's okay. Don't let that bother you. 1005, 6892, 6892, just, just stay focused. I, just, I gotta check that one off. You're not staying focused. 726005 or 1006. That's backwards dyslexic a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. 72. I see it. I got it going the right way this time. I, the numbers are there. They're just backwards. 1004370080. So where's that one? Where is that one? I see it. So that one's out of order. 1004. Okay, so there we got that one. Boom. 
12,107, 12,107, Mui BN, how you BN, I'm Mui BN, why just be when you can be Mui BN, I'm 1009, 620, 620, 620, just keep focused, stay focused, it's kind of a tedious task here, but that's okay, then we got the 15,000, 1011, boom, 15,000, that looks good, tick and tie that one off, and those are the normal transactions. Then we have these withdrawal and the bank service charges, which you'll remember when we first started up the bank rec, it asked us if there are withdrawals and service charges, which we could have actually not withdrawals, but service charges and interest. So I could have put that 15 in place when I started. I don't like doing that because I like to have, you know, my data and then I'll fix anything after I do the reconciliation. I think it kind of confuses things. In other words, to enter it beforehand. So in any case, that's what I do. So now we have to account for these. This one I would expect to have to account for because there's no way we would know how much the bank charged us for just their service fee. They just charge it and take it out of our account. And we don't know about it until we got the bank feeds or possibly with the bank feeds or until we have the bank reconciliation. Now the withdrawals, we should be recording withdrawals when we take money out on our side and then verifying them but sometimes we might not do that. So we, in this case, we didn't, so we don't have those. So those are two items that are on the bank statement that are not on our, on our books. That means we're gonna have to fix our books unless the bank was wrong, which it typically isn't. So I'm gonna say, yeah, these are legit. I'm gonna have to fix my books. These two are legit most likely as well, but they have to do with that beginning balance issue. So I'm gonna have to deal with that that's the beginning balance or first bank reconciliation problem that we will have to deal with. So we'll kind of stop it here for now. Note that if we didn't have that first beginning balance issue, and once we add these to our books, then we can check and tie everything off. At that point, our beginning balance would tie out, then we would have our additions tied out, and then our, our reductions would tie out and therefore our cleared balance would tie out meaning our cleared balance would be 61 241 85 it has to work and it will work although we got to iron out all those issues with the beginning balance or the first bank reconciliation and the beginning balance of it so in other words the cleared balance should match the bank balance once we fix these items which we'll do in in future presentation now that does not mean that our book balance as of the cutoff as of January 31st, in this case, will match that amount. Our book balance on the balance st statement will still be different by the outstanding checks. We're just talking about the cleared balance, the ones that we ticked off, the ones that we tied out to the bank statement. The ones that are not ticked off, if I go back on over here, we're not deleting those, they're not going away, they are not invalid transactions, they are transactions that have not cleared as of the cutoff date. Just like we saw with the deposit then, I could go into each of these tra items here and say, okay, did these, did these clear the bank after the cutoff date? Because when I'm doing the reconciliation, I'm gonna reconcile sometime after January 31st, and I can see if they cleared in February. If they did clear in February, then I'm not too worried about these items. I could say they're still valid. I've, I've double checked them. They've cleared in February. Uh, if they didn't clear in February, and it's been multiple months since they have cleared, then I've got to say, okay, if, if this one, if this paycheck didn't clear for multiple months, I'm going to have to ask Adam and say, what's going on with this paycheck? It doesn't look like it's cleared. That's when I might want to, you know, follow up on it at that point in time. But if it's just one month, it's not really an issue for us. So we're going to leave it there and still say it's valid. And what's it gonna do for the bank reconciliation? Well, the months that are checked off are gonna be the cleared balance, everything that's not checked off, QuickBooks, when making the report of the bank reconciliation, will show the differences of the outstanding items, which will be the uncleared checks and the uncleared deposits. That's important, not just because that helps us to check up on these uncleared items, but because if I know the exact difference between between the book balance and the bank statement balance that gives me a double check over all of the transactions and if i can double check all the transactions i'm not only double checking cash i'm double checking all of the other cycles the revenue cycle 
the payroll cycle, the purchases uh, cycle. So that's where we are right now. You'll notice that we're off by 165 here. So 165, if I go down, is, is the 150 plus the 15. So you might say, well, how can that be? Why wouldn't I be off by, like, where are these two items? Why, why aren't those in place? And you'll recall that's because we had 30,000 versus the fit 25,000 we had which is netting out against these outstanding checks right here because these are checks that we wrote in December that didn't clear until January. So that's our beginning balance problem that's kind of netting itself out. That's not the ideal way to fix it, but you could just add these two items and then move forward from there. The reason that's not the ideal way to fix the problem is because I'd like to have these checks in the system as of entered as of December and showing as when they cleared in the, in the reconciliation. So we'll talk more about that. That's the beginning balance kind of problem that's unique to the first reconciliation. Typically, we'll see more about that in future presentations. Before we wrap this up, let's just actually add these two items. So I'm just gonna enter these into the system here. So I'm gonna go back to QuickBooks and I'm gonna enter them. I'm gonna go to the home page. Usually I like to enter them into the register. So I'm gonna go into the lists dropdown and go to the chart of accounts. This is one way you can get there. Double click on the register and I'm just gonna enter those two transactions. So the first one was a withdrawal. So I'm gonna say, all right, this is as of, I'll make it as of the end of the month, 01-31-23. Uh, and I'm not gonna put a check number because it's not a check. So I'll just say no check number. And then, so I'll just delete the check number. And then the owner took it out. So you might put the owner, but I'll leave it blank for now. And then it's gonna be for uh, 150, 150. Now the question is, what's the account that it should go to? Notice if you take money out as the owner of your own sole proprietorship, usually that's gonna be a draw. And you wanna make sure that you record the draw as some kind of equity account, which will be a balance sheet account. Otherwise it'll go on the income statement and be affecting your net income. Now, sometimes if you're a bookkeeper and you do bookkeeping like for other clients and you're trying to figure out what they're doing, if they're pulling money out and then using it to buy stuff for the business, that becomes a problem because we have no audit trail of it as we do the bookkeeping. So you wanna try to talk to your clients and say, don't buy stuff with cash. When you buy stuff that's a legitimate expense that you wanna record and track so that you can write it off for taxes, you want the audit trail. So you typically wanna buy that stuff with credit cards, electronic transfers and whatnot. But if people have a tendency and they just like pulling cash out and spending cash on things, then we don't have the audit trail and we, you're gonna to have to give us more information about what it is you purchased you know, with the cash. So that, that becomes kind of an issue. What we would like to do is say, hey, look, every time I see money that's coming out as a draw, I would like to assume that that is money that you're taking out for personal use and is not some kind of expense. But first, we're but at this point, we're gonna say that we're gonna pretend we asked the client, they said it's an expense, right? So now we don't know what it's an expense for. So I'm gonna put it into miscellaneous expense in this case. So we'll say miscellaneous, do they have a miscellaneous? They don't have one in this uh, thing. So I'll just make an account for it. I'll just say in my SC, expense expense tab i'm going to set it up and i'm going to put it as an expense account so i'm going to say okay that's it now next time we'll put it in as a draw and you can see the difference so if i add it as an expense i'm going to say enter and then i go to my profit and loss for the month of january now i've got this miscellaneous expense which impacted net income now if that was actually a draw you took money out and spent it for personal use then it's going to have a, a negative, it's going to make your net income too low, lower than it should be. It's also would be recorded as a deduction for taxes, which would be kind of good for taxes, but not correct for taxes. And if you have a large account called miscellaneous expense on say your tax return, then it's likely, you know, that could draw some red flags, right? Because you're going to say, well, what is miscellaneous expense? And if it turns out the miscellaneous expense were draws or something like that, that becomes a problem. Also note that if you're doing bookkeeping or you're doing your own books and you have a tendency not to be able to distinguish or separate your books 
from the business books as easily. And so you're spending money out of the same account for personal and business stuff. Then some of those personal expenses that you have, like if you, if you went on vacation, you went to Disneyland or something like that, then if you wrote it out of your business checking account, you could still just record that transaction as, as going to, um, as going to draws, not an expense, right? You could, you could, so you could still, you, you'd have to sort out your books by saying that thing that I spent was on personal stuff. What do you, where do you put that on the account? You put that onto the balance sheet as, as draws, as if you took the money out and then spent it on Disneyland or whatever, whatever you're doing. So then let's do the other one. So I, if I go into the reconciliation, I could tick that one off. That was the 150. And then the other one we have here is the bank service charges. And so if I go back into my chart of accounts, I could say as of 131, I'm gonna say this is, I'm just gonna delete this. And I could say whatever, what's my bank chase or something. I won't put it here. I'll just say 15. And then this is gonna to go to like service charges, bank fees. So they have an account here. QuickBooks has an account, bank service charges. That looks good. I'll keep it there, 131.23. Let's record it. And then back to the reconciliation, back to the reconciliation. So there we have that 15 that has been checked off there. So once again, we're in balance at this point, even though we haven't at this time. So I can, let's make this green and let's make this green, even though we haven't ticked off these two. And that's that beginning balance problem. We could reconcile here and just kind of note what happened, but I'm gonna talk more about that in the future in the following presentation. So now also note that we did make a change to our financial statements. We've made a change to, to, to these accounts on the income statement to reconcile for things on the bank statement that weren't on our books and we made an adjustment to our cash account. So it's, we did adjust our cash account, but at the end of the day, we don't expect the cash account to be the same as the ending balance here because we do have outstanding checks and deposits. I'm just gonna run the trial balance so you can see where we stand at this point in time with those, little, with those transactions we just did from 010123. I'm gonna run it all the way to 123123 and customize it, fonts and numbers, changing it. Let's bring it to 16. So this is for the full time frame. So you could just check your numbers for those those changes. This is where we stand as of this time. And we'll continue and finalize the bank reconciliation finally soon.